Hello everyone, my name is Roy, and in today's recording I'll be showing how we can take a MySQL database running in Docker and create an instant GraphQL API for it using StepSend. For this, of course, you need to have Docker on your machine, as well be running a Docker container. And then you can take the with MySQL example from the StepSend examples repository. In here, you can find the setup instructions in the README, um, an example, the explanation to set up Docker, and to also set up ngrok, which we'll be using to create a local tunnel to the locally running Docker to the cloud, so it can be used with StepSend, and of course, how to set up StepSend. The only thing you need to set up StepSend actually is installing the CLI from NPM. So you can run NPM install, append the global flag StepSend, and then you should be set to go. In VS Code, I've already copied the with MySQL directory uh, from StepSend's examples repository. In here, you can find a Docker Compose file that will take the latest MySQL image, set some credentials for it, like a database name and also the username and password, and then take some seed data and populate the database with the seed data. And this seed data can be found in init.sql. And this Docker Compose file is something I can start by running Docker Compose up. I append this flag so you can reuse this terminal because we can use Docker Desktop later on to see if my container is actually running. If I press enter, Docker will start setting this up. The first time you run this command, it might take a while as Docker needs to take the latest MySQL image and load it into your machine and make sure everything is set up to go. As you can see here, it's downloading quite some files. Let's make this a bit bigger. You can see it's quite a few blocks that need to be downloaded. So while this is loading, let's have a look at the init SQL file. In here, you can find the tables that will be created, like a table for address, table for customer, product, and so forth. And also all the data that will be inserted into it. So you can see the data for address, here's some addresses, and then also more data, like order data, or even product data, which is a bit more... Um, a bit more rich, as you can see, there's like a title, there is a description with even some HTML tags in there, and then there are images. And all this data is something we can query with GraphQL. As soon as we've set up the Docker container and run steps and import to import this MySQL database to a GraphQL API. So depending on the speed of your internet and the speed of your machine, uh, setting up the Docker the very first time, it might take some time. As I said, it will be loading the MySQL image and make sure it's ready to use on your device. I believe it's almost finished now. You can see it downloaded the newer image, MySQL latest, and it created my container. So everything is done here. So let me go back to Docker and see what it looks like there. So no containers running. We actually have the with MySQL container running now. If you click on it, you can see the port it's running on. You can see initialize with data. Database file starting the server. And in the end, you can see the server is ready. So now if I go back to my VS Code, and if you go to the README, you can actually see there's another step you need to take because we need to make sure that this Docker container that runs locally on my machine, um, it's accessible from outside of my machine. So when I run steps and import MySQL, because I want to create a GraphQL API from MySQL database, I need to tell steps and where they can reach this uh, Docker container with, uh, with the database. So for this, I'll be using ngrok. And of course, you need to make sure ngrok is set up. You need to install and make sure you have an account. But if you're able to put your Docker somewhere else, something that is tied to a... Um, address that is accessible from the outside, that's also fine. In this case, I haven't, so I need to run ngrok ngrok tcp3306 because I want to make a port. I want to make a tunnel to the port 3306 and I want to receive TCP connections. So this will create a connection for ngrok to my local host port 3306. And then I just need to copy paste this part as I will be needing it when I set up the MySQL import. So on my second terminal window, I'll be running stepsn oh, steps import 
my SQL. This will first ask me what I want my endpoint to be named. So my endpoint in this scenario, that's called API with my SQL as I name as I like to name my endpoints to the use case, which is loading a MySQL database. It will now ask me several things, like what is your host? And the host is whatever I just copy pasted from the Ankwork output without the TCP. It will be six of TCP, Ankwork, and then a port number. It will ask my database name, which I can find in my Docker Compose file. And here you can see it created a database called Introspection with the username test user introspection and the password is this one. Stepson will now import the database. It will generate a schema based on introspection. So it will introspect the database contents and create the GraphQL schema accordingly. You can see it successfully imported the schemas from Stepson. And also if I go to the tab that's open for uh, Angrok, you can see there have been some connections meaning steps and call the, call the database in order to introspect it. If you go to the file mysql.graphql, you can actually see a schema has been created. So you can find some types for customer address and also a bunch of queries. So I will be going to in a .sql file in example. So let me open them side by side. You can see the table address has its own type called address. And you can see there's also a ID in there, which is an integer, it's an integer there. And then all these four chars have been translated into a string. And the only thing I need to run GraphQL API is running steps and start. With this, steps and will take the .graphql files and my configuration from config.jaml, which is the database connection string, and it will create a database a GraphQL API based on this database. And as you can see here, it created a public endpoint as I didn't sign up for an account yet, um, which I can also explore at a local post, local host URL. I've already loaded this in my browser. We go into this new tab and reload it. You can see it has loaded a graphical IDE for me, in which I can use any of the queries that are in the Explorer, like get address list, get address by ID. So let's try and get a list of all the addresses. Let's get some fields in there. And this data will be coming from the database. So if I would be going to my init.sql file, you can find all these fields and all this data is already there. And of course, you can also make connections between uh, data coming from different parts in here. So let's say if we want to connect an address to a user, an example, you can use the type customer address to make this connection. Or let's say you want to connect an order to a customer, then you can actually use a custom directive called App Materializer um, to make this connection based on the customer ID. So let's try and do this. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is create a query to get the customer by ID. So we already have a query to get a list of customers. So let's try and create a query to get a customer by ID. Let's copy paste this one. Customer. Once type will be customer as well. And then select this from customer. If I save this, it will automatically redeploy my schema to steps in. So I will be able to query this from the GraphQL IDE. And here, I will be able to get the so get customer list, get the ID and the name in example. Verify it. This will give me a customer list, but I can also get customer by ID now, as I just created query if customer by id and an id would be one this will give me first customer i can see this is still red because i actually need to reload this page because the graphical id doesn't know this query is there yet it does now however and then i could make a connection with orders 
because customer ID is present in order. So in here, an example, I could say, let's get customer with customer type, do a add materializer, and say I want to use the query get customer by ID, and I want to pass the ID coming from customer ID field. If I save this, it will try and make the connection. If there are any errors, you will actually see it right in your terminal. But in this scenario, it doesn't give me an error. So now I can also get the order list again. So get order list and ask for uh, an ID, an example for the carrier. But I can also ask for customer ID. This already worked. This will give me a list of all the orders with the customer ID. But now I can also append the customer field. First, refresh the page. Now I can also ask for customer field, but it's a relationship coming from a different query. And in example, get the name of the customer. So this is the way you make connections between data from different tables in GraphQL using steps and of course. So you no longer have to write join queries in SQL. Instead, you just use the, the power of the GraphQL schema. And of course, whenever you do this materializer setup, we will make sure that we don't send unnecessary SQL queries to your database. So that's it for today. If you like this content, please uh, subscribe to our channel and also make sure to follow us on Twitter or go to our website stepsend.com slash getting started.